601 on December 13th. Uh, first order of business is citizens' communication. Did we have any? Did you want to address the board? Yeah. However, you're comfortable. Board recognizes Mr. Harris. Is that no. correct? What's your name, sir? Bill Harris. Bill Harris. Yeah. It used to be Wild Bill from Hooverville. The pastor over here at this black church, he gave me that nickname. <laughs> Wild Bill from Hooverville. That's a little heart that got mellowed it down to Happy Bill. Well, that, that works. That's that a good works. one. Did you have any communication you wanted that's, to? That's it. And she said I could sit her. Yes, sir. I'm uncomfortable sitting up. I'm not a speaker. I'm a storyteller. Okay. And my story is uh, I love libraries. And I, made it, I don't know what I said last time, but I made an exhaustive search, including taking a lot of pictures. Here, Taylor, Georgetown, and I don't know, for the libraries. And uh, I'm at a comfortable level of distress over the magazine section, which is relatively bare. It's been stripped of magazines except for Southern Living, Consumer Digest, People, Out, and one or two others. And and I'm embarrassed as a as a Flubervillian, is that if that's the right word? I believe it is. And uh, I'm ashamed of how we compare with uh, Taylor's. Taylor's is equally sparse, and they're also the official library for for the. Temple College, which really frustrates me. That means if you're a student up there, you don't have access to the business magazines and all those things important to a lot of students' careers. But they, but they, they're not too worried about it. And I don't live up there, so I haven't pestered her. I met her, but uh, and and they have an Austin paper, and that's about it. No Wall Street, no New York, New York none of the papers. And, uh, and I photographed all that. Then I went to all the stores in town that sell magazines and took copies of what they don't have. So it's not just it's not just the town doesn't have anything. And all this press they're getting from Samsung, it's embarrassing to me to know that people are coming in from all over the world to work, and they go into the library, they go into the stores, and they don't see they don't see any news uh, vehicles down there. So. That's why I'm obsessed over it at my tender age of 86. Went to Georgetown. It's it's uh, not as bad as it's not as bad as Taylor, uh, and it's uh, a little better than we are here, but it's not it's not near what you would think. Georgetown is so proud of Georgetown, and they should be. And my, I've got family that live there, but they're. Their library is, is reasonably sparse of, of magazines that should be in demand by anybody who's in big career, early career, or, or towards retirement. Then I went to Round Rock, which blew me away. New, new, new library, a lot of resources, I understand all that on the third floor. And wow, do they have magazines. They have magazines. And I bore into that and took pictures of that. And they have an excuse to have that much resources. The excuse is called Michael Dale. He played a part in his early, uh, uh, early lifetime. Huh? It's time. About three months? Yes, anyway, sir. Um, uh, ultimately, uh, I don't know the procedure, so you can find out. I want to know the backgrounds of our board and just prepare for the new year because I'm, I'm, I'm friendly, but I'm not passive. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, can I sir. Can I ask him a question? Uh, no. no. Okay. Uh -huh. You can discuss it during the line of it. Okay. Uh, next you. on the agenda is the approval of last month's minutes. Uh, if everyone has had a chance to look at those. Yeah, I motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. And next on the agenda is our library director's report. Uh, Mr. Harris, if you want to stick around, I it's think on the agenda. Okay. I, I think you'd be pleased with one of the agenda good, items. Good. Okay. Um, so our staffs are actually up this month. Um, 
compared to this time last year. Overall, they're still down a little bit because um, in October we had a little dip in our um, circulation and our visits. Our um, program attendance is still moving upwards. And again, our outreach is um, it's a little higher. We didn't have a lot of outreach in November. Um, plus, we have a holiday in November, so it's a it's a little lower than um, it was last year. But overall, it's still over um, last year's. I have gotten word from the vendor that we may see our after hours book machine as early as next week. Um, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that's going to happen. Um, we are getting the nursing pod also on the 22nd, I believe. So that's going to go in the kids area. Um, and um, we are moving forward with being a family place library. So our kids section, you're going to notice a lot of changes in there over the next few months. Make it a little more uh, family friendly, a little more inviting. And that is all I have. Yes. What kind of changes to make it more family friendly and inviting? Um, they're going to have more interactive things, more um, spaces where parents can sit with their kids and mm -hmm. read rather than having just a wall of computers. Um, we have on in our budget this year a um, family carol, so it's that computer carol that has like the playpen attached yeah. to it. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'm excited. It looks like we had a winter clothing swap. We did. Uh, winter clothing swap went well. Um, do you remember the number? Was it like 58 people? Somewhere around there. Um, people were invited to bring winter clothing, sweaters, hats, scarves, gloves, etc. Um, and they could swap with other people's stuff. So you get a new wardrobe for free. All right. It's the second one we've done. It's the second clothing swap we've done. The first winter one we've done. All right, next on the agenda is the uh, Friends of the Library report. We have a guest today from the Friends of the Library. This is Aaron Mills. He is also an awesome library volunteer. Um, prior to, I think, most of the people being on the board, we had a representative from the Friends that would come and do the Friends of the Library report. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, COVID happened and all that stuff, so that kind of fell to the wayside. Um, I have invited them to come back if they want. So I don't know that they can make it every meeting. Um, on, the, on the meetings that they can't make it, I will give the report. Um, but when they can, it's better to hear from them. Good evening, Library Board. Uh, I'm not great at public speaking, so I mostly have a written bit here that I'm just going to read off. Uh, I'm Erin Millis. Uh, as she said, I'm a library volunteer since about 2019, uh, Friends of the Library member since 2022, and a serving board member uh, since 20, well, for 2023. I'm responsible for some of the technical initiatives the Friends are pursuing with the goal of increasing our outreach and media um, presence. Tonight I'm going to give you guys a brief summary of our financial status, our activities, and I'm here to answer or relay any questions you may have. Uh, the Friends of the Fluvial Library and all volunteer organization have been busy in 2023. Over $8,000 has been raised through the sales of donated used books during the book sales. More than $3,000 has been received in donations. The ongoing buy the book right outside here has also exceeded our expectations. Uh, our budgeted income for 2023 was surpassed a little over halfway through the year, and we're currently at an actual final income that is over 50% higher than 2022. We've increased our budgeted expenses for 2024 accordingly, uh, allocating more to library programs, volunteer and or internship awards. Uh, the Friends have historically had extremely lean operational expenses, and in 2024, we're continuing this trend, but with some increases to support our new technical initiatives and outreach efforts. The Friends held elections for the 2024 officers and board members at our recent meeting. We've selected a new vice president and designated a treasurer-elect to eventually assume the treasurer role, as well as designating new board members to fill our roles. Our final book sale of 2023 was November 3rd. It was our fifth quarterly book sale. <laughs> and as mentioned earlier, we considered it quite successful. Our next book sale is targeted for January 18th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. This year, we're specifically targeting improvements in our technical approach to operations and outreach. 
We're in the home stretch of a phase one rollout of a new website that gives more information, history, and opportunities to, related to the Friends. We have several motivated individuals who are already increasing our activity on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Nextdoor, even Reddit. The extra exposure, it's already measurably contributing to our financials, and we're attempting to position ourselves to take advantage of future potential fundraising opportunities, like Amplify, which would be difficult without these type of presences. So uh, it, it's all kind of got an end goal. You've noticed changes probably in the buy the book area out there. We've added QR codes that take you to payment processors for taking purchases and donations via credit cards and even contribution directly from phones and tablets. We, take we still take cash at book sales, uh, but we're also set up with the iPads to taking payments straight from the credit cards and even phones. People just swipe and go. Uh, additionally, we're bringing our membership tracking activity and outreach into the modern era. We now use always online secure databases that track our members, their membership levels, their contributions, both monetary and service. Uh, and we're using this for regular newsletter updates via email, as well as tracking who gets their five free books at every book sale. During the last book sale, we had more than a half dozen new members join the organization. We had them fill out our old style pamphlet, but we were entering them on the fly into the system at the point of checkout. A stretch goal for 2024, we're trying to automate that further and do direct integration from the website and the payment processor. The driving force behind all of these things is if you make it easy for someone to give your nonprofit money, they will, and the library is going to benefit. So we've also been dabbling in a little bit of real world products to show support for the organization in the library. We've made up some pins uh, with the Friends logo that we let go for 10 bucks at the book sale. But for 15 bucks, which is a membership, we give them to you for free. So that hook has worked. Uh, we've also had some patches made that have the old library sign on it, which is very cool. Uh, we sold those at the last book sale. There was some interest, and we're even getting them put on hats. Hopefully, we're going to have enough ready for the next book sale, but I think they look pretty good. So uh, we're going with the blue ones to start. We've got the sewing work for these patches being done by a local Pflugerville company, which is great. And we're in the process of quoting out canvas-style bags with both these logos, the friends and the sign, uh, because people want something to haul the loot away from the book sale. Uh, it is something that gets asked about at the checkout desk, and I figure if we've got them, it's another way we can help generate money for the organization. All that being said, I'm specifically inviting each of you to become a member of the Friends. Memberships start as low as $15, and as I said, we'll throw in a little pin. Uh, our monthly board meetings are open to all members, and our next meeting date is on January 16th at 4 p.m. here at the library. Thank you for allowing me to give this report. Uh, I expect they'll be a little shorter in the future. Uh, special thanks to Jennifer for covering for us for the last couple of years. We definitely appreciate you doing that along with your regular duties. Do any of you have questions, concerns, or communications you'd like me to relay to the Friends Board? I personally would just like to say thank you so much for coming into the technical age. I've been consistently pushing on the, you know, let's make it a 503C? 501C. 501C, and, you know, let's get an online way people can donate, and I've been really pushing that over here. So it's really nice that you guys have, you know, finally created that conduit mm -hmm. um, because exactly what you've been saying. You know, if you give them, make it easy, then they'll do it. So, uh, and having swag, you know, all these are ideas, but I was pushing them over here. So I'm glad that you guys are doing them sort of a go. That's awesome. Okay, Keep it thank up. you. Anyone else? Are you guys a registered 501C? We are a 501C not-for-profit organization. Uh, we are an all-volunteer organization. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're pretty open on everything. So. Now, that closet looks pretty small every time I see it open. Are you guys gonna have enough space? Because obviously you're growing with iPads, hats, you know, that eventually builds boxes. So I, I don't know if you've been in there recently. I've never uh, been in there. Okay. But it so looks small. I, I can give you some pictures of how it started. Uh, one of the early projects I did was taking all the old shelving out of there, putting in wire shelves and those black plastic crates that you see at Home Depot. And we've actually got them stacked all the way from the floor to just below the ceiling where a fire marshal won't complain. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got hundreds of them in there. And at this point, that room fills in about two months. So the, the quarterly book sales that are actually five of them, we're doing them because the room gets so many donations. So it gets to the point where there's only about a foot and a half to move in there. So we'd love more space, but we understand there's other places that space could be used. Okay.
It's Thank much you. better when we have the friends come and give a with <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'd love to have you guys keep coming to me. Oh, we'll try. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, the flag disposal. So uh, as I was leaving the last meeting, uh, Mr. Harris caught me in the parking lot. And remember, you told me about our flags. Uh, I came around in the daytime and looked at them, and they looked pretty worn down and raggedy. Uh, so I emailed Jennifer about the proper disposal and replacement of the Texas flag and the United States flag. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, they are changed out by the city. We do let them know when they get raggedy um, and they come and change them out. The Texas flag has not been changed out yet, but they'll get that on the next round. Um, we actually have a flag disposal box that a Eagle Scout made for us. Um, and <clears throat> people can come and, and our flags also can go into the box. And then the Boy Scouts come and pick them up and properly dispose of them. So, yeah, so we're working on getting them replaced. Uh, and that, that yeah, was... the, the U.S. flag has been replaced. The Texas oh. flag will be shortly. Wow, so just like that, that quick. Uh, so next thing on the agenda, maybe we can get magazines that quick because, uh, you, you know, uh, we're discussing and consideration action on magazine purchases. Um, so I guess the idea I had was uh, to reach out to doctor's offices or maybe the city offices, places that already purchased magazines and then have them, instead of throw them away at the end of the month or three months or whatever cycle they're on, because they're always getting new magazines in for people to read, uh, ours don't need to be exactly up to date. You know, we could be three to six to eight months behind uh, and get them for free. The problem with the magazines isn't um, as much having a budget for them. We can budget for them. We have in the past. The bigger problem is that um, they take up a huge amount of space, mm -hmm. but also often, like, we would have to do one of two things. We have to go with a magazine subscription service um, to get volumes of magazines um, rather than, or, you know, the alternative would be to try and get a subscription individually to each magazine, which is a huge amount of time, and then you have to do the follow-up on it. The problem that we've had with getting a service to do it is um, if the magazine goes out of print and goes online only, which has happened quite a bit, um, we don't always know about that. So we've, we're paying for this, uh, for this service mm -hmm. and this item, and we're not getting it. Um, so those are the bigger problems. Um, we also offer, and uh, Daniel printed out a nice um, sheet. Um, well, before I go into this, we do have a request list for magazines up there, and we are going to buy them. Um, we are not going to have them located across that wall because, again, that's prime real estate that we really need to use for things that are circulating more than magazines. We will have a spinner that will have magazines in them, more than what we have right now, because we'll honor those requests that we've gotten from people. But we also offer, um, through Hoopla, 122 magazine titles. Mm. Um, as an e-magazine. Yeah. So um, we do have the resources available for people. Also to Mr. Harris's point about um, students who maybe need access to particular business journals and peer-reviewed journals, we have um, the TechShare databases, which have, I believe, I want to say 50 something, is it 56 or 58, Daniel? Do you remember? Um. It's, it's a number of of databases where students can go and access those peer-reviewed mm -hmm. journals because those also are not being printed right. um, to the extent that they were being printed before and they are only available mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. um, so they can either go through their own university library or they can certainly come here and or, or get a card here and use our resources. Um, so there are alternatives to the print. Um, Right now, when we're, if you go take a look, when we're so pressed for space, we really want to um, have things out there that are going to circulate more than the print magazines. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think, uh, does anybody else have any comment? I, I know, uh, Ms. Riddick, did you want to say something about no. the magazines? No. Okay. Uh, Jennifer asked my, my question. Anybody else have any uh, comments or? Thoughts? We don't have numbers on, like, 
Because a lot of the time when people would look at magazines, they wouldn't necessarily take them. Yeah, they browse them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't have numbers yeah. on browsing, um, but I would say pri primary use of magazines is browsing it while in the library. Yeah. Uh, so I do have a consideration. I know we, uh, we've sent out the surveys before mm -hmm. uh, to emails about parents and programs, stuff like that. Maybe on the next survey, we could just simply, uh, you know, include a question. Uh, would you like to see more print magazines in the library and, and put it to the put it to the people of Pflugerville? Okay. Would it, I need to wait for the next meeting, though. Pardon me? I need to wait for the next meeting. Uh, if the board wishes to ask you a question, they can they can do it now because it's a line item now. Um, I, it's I, up to the board. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, Do you have a question, Mr. Harris? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, you're going to abandon those metal, those expensive metal shelves over there for magazines? No, no. she's repurposing them. We're going to repurpose them for another collection. Right. We're going to move the audio books, the CD uh -huh. audio books, over into that space so that we can free up that, that middle space okay. of the library. And this is because you have so much traffic in the audio books, is that why? It's more that we have um, so many materials that we're having to weed quite a bit okay. in order to fit everything in the library. Um, it's, we have a very limited amount of space. We have a very limited amount of shelf space. We have purchased some additional shelving. We need a place to put it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's becoming increasingly difficult yeah. to do. Can, can and, I, is this, the, I, don't, I don't want to do anything I shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. but if I could suggest, even if it's temporary, use of the shelves that are empty today. And, and I doubt very seriously if this has been done in, in, in any libraries. But one of the things, among the many things you obsess over when you get to be as old as I am, and you blame it on the aging process, is uh, I, I, I can pick up, which I do frequently, I'll go and I'll take out a stack of Forbes or Fortune or or uh, Link or Link. Uh, well, there's a lot of them. Uh, I have too many too many of them. But I'll pull out a ten year, a, a twenty year old copy of Fast Company with Bill Gates on the cover. Mm -hmm. Fascinating where he was twenty years ago. Uh, uh, the people people in business, we with Samsung and with all the corporate activity going on around us, and with a little bit of promotion also for the economic development people, I think it could be a resource to say that, that even if we simply say we're doing a study for the next few months on the value, the learning value of past, I, past publications. I agree I with could, you. I could, I, could literally, I could literally bring forms, fortune, mm -hmm. Uh, venture, I agree with you on the value of past publications. Mm -hmm. However, I, I feel mm -hmm. like it serves the community and the library better to have those items in an electronic format where they're not taking up um, real okay. estate in the library. And that's because you're extremely proficient on that vehicle, the electronic. And I realize mm -hmm. that there's a lot of that going on because you, you have done the and, and we do offer one-on-one -on -one tech help for people, particularly our seniors. Um, if they come in with their device or if they come in with a question, they can, um, somebody from staff will help walk them through it one-on-one. -on -one. can set we, you up with Hoopla, for example. Yeah. We also intend to, as soon as we get our new library um, reservation software up and running, um, to have um, Ask a Librarian hours so people can register either by phone or online. Um, reserve a librarian so that they can come in with whatever information need they have, whether it is, is accessing our electronic resources or um, print resources, then they will have one-on-one -on -one help mm -hmm. to do that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, I think to speak to your point, the, the, the library is going to be increasing its uh, pure, uh, magazine publications in a, in a spinner rack, but that area is probably going to be repurposed, and, and as a lot of things are moving toward digital now, uh, magazines themselves are moving to a more digital format. Uh, I get Game Informer for video games and stuff like that, but the paper's thinner. You know, they're they're reducing costs and going digital more, and so you almost can't get a print uh, subscription 
anymore. You still can, but they're becoming more difficult they to do. They just quit delivering for all American states, even though they have a subscription. Right. They're trying to drive those right. online. online. And yeah. I'm, I'm against that because of the difference. There's a huge difference between print and online. There's a, there's a big difference, and, I'm, and I've spent a long time involved with that difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in spite of the trend, new, cost of newsprint is an issue in that industry. Mm -hmm. I'm in the Texas Press Association, so I live with how often the, the week, even the weeklies out in the buildings going out of business. Okay, I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm on top of all of that. So I'm sensitive to that. But the industry is giving up too early. Nobody and nobody is really explaining the difference between print and online. There's a huge difference online. People say, oh, I'll get that online. No, you don't. Online, you get what you ask for. You miss the blessing of serendipity, which is what you get in print. My husband would agree with you 100%. Well, your husband's a brilliant man. The, the <laughs> thing about so. that is, is that's a matter of opinion, though. Right? Yeah, but my opinion, no, anyway. Well, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But, 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 but see, and that's an interesting figure, and I don't know the answer to that figure. If you, if you, if you really focus on getting an honest answer, uh, you'll, what you'll find is the people that say, oh, I prefer getting online. Uh, I'm curious Bill as, as opposed to curious George, okay? <laughs> And there's just a huge difference between the learning potential of print versus mm -hmm. online. And I'm not giving up that battle. Now, I think the alternative may be, and, and, and as I see what, what you all are talking about, where you're going with it, that, that, that it may be, the, but it, it's competitive. You thought you form a 501c3 and you start a version of what I'm talking about that has what I'm talking about, supported with a lot of donor money instead of tax money, to do, to, to offer what I'm talking about, maybe a combination of, of Starbucks and business publications and so forth. Well, we look forward, thank you for your input. We look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you for letting me make any comments. Yes, sir. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully the addition of the new magazines will, we'll probably never be as big as Round Rock, but you know, uh, we're, we're working on it. We're making a little bit more. Uh, and so the next item on the agenda is consideration of student liaisons. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, does the board have any uh, questions? Uh, what What are you? I understand wanting to be, you know, grow with your community and, and get comfortable here. But what What do you think that the library, as opposed to, you know, volunteering in some other capacity, what is a library specifically? Why'd you choose that one? Oh, I chose I chose a library because I feel like libraries are places where you can learn. And I feel like that's really important. And honestly. With the interest that I have, um, I have like a particular interest in art. I um, actually volunteer in playing at nursing homes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I thought like at my old library in New York, we have like a lot of activities, um, and I thought <laughs> like I could provide my insight for sure. that here. Good. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. What's your favorite genre to read? Um, I like poetry. Too. All right. Nice. Wow. I'm under, I mean, that's a, that's an underrepresented, uh, underrepresented genre, and mm -hmm. I applaud you. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, is this his application right here? No, that no. is the other young man who okay. will okay. be here in January. I do have Lucas's, um, and I will I will email that out without the. Um, I have to redact all the contact information first. I will do that. Lucas, we have meetings once a month. What other extracurriculars do you have? And I guess what are the time commitments of them? Um, I do swimming, but I don't, if, if it's like this time, like around 6 o'clock on Wednesdays, I don't think that'll conflict with it. Okay. No, 
something will be fun. How many liaisons are we hoping for? You can have up to five. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, Lucas is with Weiss. No, you're Hendrickson. Hendrickson. Mm -hmm. And um, Kabad is from Weiss. Weiss. And is this something that we need to vote on? or? Uh, you don't have to vote on it tonight. You will have to vote yeah. to appoint them um, at, at some point. Maybe okay. the next meeting. Well, well, thank you for coming and speaking with us tonight. We'll review your application and then uh, probably have a termination at the next board meeting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any new business uh, or anything they would like to mention? Oh, I had something. Um, we have a event coming up in January called Winterfest, and uh, Carmen's a youth coordinator that uh, does that um, event for us, and she wanted me to invite the board if anybody's interested in volunteering at that event. Um, there'll be like games and treats and um, just a lot of activities to do based on the theme of winter. Um, so if you're interested in volunteering, you can email Carmen and I have her card here if anybody wants. Is that evening or, or during the day? It's oh, practice. I'm sorry. It's, uh, I have the... It's 1.30 to 4.30. There you okay. go. It's 2 it's, to 4, but volunteering is 1.30 to 4.30. Carmen right. wanted to say thank you for volunteering. Oh, for sure. 1.30 to 4.30. To 4.30. It's on January 13th, 16. so it's a Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's no other action or business, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Uh, do we have a second? I second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, say nay. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.